Welcome to this week's travel and history tip. I haven't forgotten about Route 66. We are gathering more information about Route 66 in Arizona this week, and I wanted to wait before I presented the rest of the Route 66 Saturday tips. Today we will be driving along U.S. Highway 90 in southwest Texas, west of Del Rio. After crossing the Pecos River, you will come to Langtree, an old ghost town, where we stopped at the Judge Roy B. Visitor Center. He was famous for being the Justice of the Peace, law west of the Pecos. Judge Roy Bean lived a life in which fiction became so intermingled with fact that he became a legend within his lifetime. Basis for his renown were the decisions which he reached in this building as the law west of the Pecos. Court was held as frequently on the porch, spectators grouped about on horseback, the judge's law library consisted of a single volume and 1879 copy of the revised statutes of Texas. He seldom consulted it, however, calling instead on his own ideas about the brand of justice which should apply. This he effectively dispensed together with liberal quantities of bluff and bluster. Since Langtree had no jail, all offenses were deemed finable with Bean pocketing the fines. Drunken prisoners often were chained to mesquite trees in front of the building until they sobered up enough to stand trial. The Rio Grande River is literally a stone's throw from this saloon. This building was named the Jersey Lily for the famous English actress Lily Langtree, whom Bean admired and for whom he claimed to have named the town. His lamp frequently burned into the night as he composed letters to her, but he never saw her since her only visit to Langtree occurred in 1904, less than a year after Bean died. And Bean is buried in Del Rio, Texas, approximately 40 miles east of Langtree. The Cactus Garden area is awesome, and they have some great signs of life in the Chihuahuan Desert, which is considered one of the most biologically diverse deserts in the world. The Chihuahuan Desert is the the largest desert in North America. Continuing on the road a couple hundred miles, we landed in Marfa, which is famous for the Marfa lights. After we checked in to the RV Park's, well, rather retro office, we set out south to head towards Presidio to go see Cibolo Creek Ranch. Cibolo Creek Ranch is a historic place in Presidio County, Texas, established as a cattle ranch prior to the Civil War. It has been used in modern times for hunting and a shooting location for the movie industry. It includes a fort called El Fortin del Cibolo, which has been renovated as a luxury hotel featuring watchtowers and three-foot-thick adobe walls. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia died at the ranch in 2016. Many of you may have heard of this historical event. Among his fellow guests at the ranch were members of the International Order of St. Hubertus, a male-only fraternity of hunters and wildlife conservationists. The ranch is perched in a beautiful setting east of the Mexican-United States border in the gorgeous Janata Mountains of the Chihuahuan Desert. Unable to enter the property, we just took pictures at the main gate. And here is Elephant Rock, just a mile south of the ranch entrance. On our return to Marfa, we passed this particular U.S. Border Patrol station, and it was actually closed, which is very rare these days. We normally go through many Border Patrol stations as we ride along the border between the U.S. and Mexico. As we were heading out to find more about the Marfa lights, we read this sign, Presidio is claimed to be the oldest town in America. It is at the confluence of the Concho and the Rio Grande Rivers, a settlement for over 10,000 years. Well, we know there's no such thing as 10,000 years, but we'll give them 4,000. It is the site of the first recorded wagon train crossing into Texas, December 10th, 1582, headed by Antonio de Espejo. The Cibolo Creek Ranch is just north of Presidio. The drive between Presidio and Big Bend is one of the most gorgeous of all drives in the country. In a lot of small towns that we find on off the beaten paths. They have interesting artwork. Driving along Highway 90 east of Marfa, we found this interesting piece of artwork. This guy reminded me of Sid. The local police officer told us that these were lit up at night, so we returned at night. But before doing so, we headed west of Marfa and found these awesome pieces of art. As sunset fell across West Texas, we drove out to go see the Marfa lights. And you say, why does she keep talking about the Marfa lights? What are the Marfa lights? The state of Texas has erected a roadside parking area nine miles east of Marfa on U.S. Highway 90 for motorists to view the curious phenomena. The Marfa Mystery Lights Viewing Center was built in 2003 and we went out there around 10 o'clock as 
the story goes, the Marfa lights are often visible on clear nights between Marfa and Paisano Pass in northeastern Presidio County as one faces the Chinata Mountains. At times, they appear colored as they twinkle in the distance. They move about, split apart, melt together, disappear, and reappear. Presidio County residents have watched the lights for over a hundred years. The first historical record of them recalls them in 1883. A young cowhand, Robert Reed Ellison, saw a flickering light while he was driving cattle through Paisano Pass and wondered if it was the campfire of Apache Indians. There are all kinds of great stories attached to the Marfa lights. No one really knows what they are. Some people just think they're headlights from cars on Highway 67. But how can they be headlights on cars if they were seen in 1883? We didn't get to see the Marfa lights as it was cloudy the night we were there. We did get to see a beautiful lightning show though. There were at least 30 cars so I would guess there was almost 100 people sitting out there waiting to see the Marfa lights. I don't know that anyone saw it. We didn't. We left after a while and returned to these pipes. I don't know what else to call them. Lit up. It was actually really pretty. And now here's old Sid. He's lit up. The next morning we left and we drove west on 90 heading towards El Paso and points beyond but we had to stop first at Prada. And all the ladies except for me I guess knows what Prada is. And I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Here is Marfa Prada. Prada Marfa was established on October 1st 2005. I enjoyed strolling along the fence to see the menagerie of locks. So, if you're going on a trip, take an old lock with you, and hopefully you will come across a place like this where you can hitch your lock. Prada Marfa is just a few miles north of the tiny settlement of Valentine, described as a pop architectural land art project. Prada Marfa is the work of a collaborative duo based in London and Berlin. In an article in Vogue magazine, Prada Marfa was described as the fashion girl statue of liberty, meant to have a natural life and blend with surroundings over time as the adobe crumbles from erosion the toll of vandalism versus restoration confound the equation. Between Alpine and Marfa, we saw the Target store but were unable to stop. There was a, a building similar to this but half the size with the Target sign out front. We'll have to stop there on a return trip. The last stop in this travel history tip is in Van Horn, which is located where U.S. Highway 90 meets I-10 and continues on to El Paso. Van Horn grew as a Texas railroad town for the Texas and Pacific Railway lines and for the San Antonio El Paso overland mail system. Visitors needed a hotel, so in the 1930s, El Pasoan investor Charles Bassett built Hotel El Capitan to serve travelers at the crossroads of West Texas tourism. Trost architectural design features Mission and Pueblo revival styles, plus touches of everything from Victorian to Art Deco. He is credited for being the first architect to address building design for the desert, an approach Trost called Arid America. And this hotel is absolutely absolutely beautiful and we went inside the lobby to see the beautiful tile, the wrought iron stairwell, and exposed Spanish figures supporting 14-foot ceilings. Topping it all though is an exact replica of the original sign, a red neon beacon 25 feet high that simply announces Hotel El Capitan. Notice the cactus growing in the pots way up on top of the roof. I hope you've enjoyed this little trip down U.S. Highway 90. American history. Learn it. Love it. Appreciate it. Thank you.